All right, as we said, uh, we were going to move into a discussion of CAM photosynthesis from the last video uh, re recording. So we're going to move into the um, that topic here. So we finished talking about C4 photosynthesis for the moment. Uh, CAM photosynthesis is where we're going to see carboxylation happening in two steps, but all within this one cell, which is the mesophyll cell. We don't have bundle sheath cells involved here. Um, so C4 photosynthesis involved bundle sheath cells because CO2 had to be concentrated in a separate cell um, from where it was captured. And here we're going to see it all concentrated within one cell, but here we have what's happening at night. And over here is what's happening whoops, in, the, in the daytime during, uh, with sunlight hours. So plants that utilize camp photosynthesis are water stressed. Um, they are in typically in, in desert environments um, where it's a high temperature, high light intensity, and very little water availability. And so they have to keep their stomata closed at night and during the day, rather. Um, normally, they would take up carbon dioxide during the day, and that would be utilized in the Calvin cycle. Uh, but to limit the amount of water loss, um, we've talked about this before. This is going to potentially increase the um, the risk of photorespiration. But but plants um, that utilize CAM photosynthesis, like C4 photosynthesis, have this way of concentrating CO2, so that now they can close their stomata during the daytime because they can open them at night here. So in, at night the stomata are open and that allows the, a time of day when uh, these plants can take up carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide diffuses through the stomata into a, a mesophyll cell. It gets converted into a bicarbonate ion because it's um, uh, dissolved in water here. Um, but essentially carbon dioxide is now going to undergo that first carboxylation step here um, where it's accepted by or it's fixed by um, phosphoenolpyruvate once again just like in C4 photosynthesis. So phosphoenolpyruvate utilizes uh, PEP carboxylase also again from C4 photosynthesis to fix a carbon dioxide molecule uh, it removes that phosphate group from the um, phosphoenolpyruvate, and now we have a th so we have a three carbon molecule here, uh, combining with a one carbon molecule to form a four carbon oxaloacetate. So all of this should be familiar from C4 photosynthesis. Here's where things get a little different. Um, well, first of all, oxaloacetate is just like in C4 photosynthesis converted to malate. Malate, however, is going to be taken up into a vacuole here in the mesophyll cell converted to malic acid. Um, now that's going to result in a decline, a, d a dropping pH here as the acid content increases throughout the night because all night CO2 is going to be captured by um, phosphoenolpyruvate converted to malate stored in a vacuole. Alright, then we go to day. And during the daytime, here we have our closed stomata, and the malic acid that was stored in the vacuole here is now going to be exported out and converted, um, bec it becomes malate in solution here. Um, and now we have that, um, that decarboxylation step um, where CO2 is uh, removed right along here from malate, and now it enters the Calvin cycle. So this is where Rubisco is going to be found and now we've got a nice high concentration of carbon dioxide that is out competing any oxygen nearby um, to prevent photorespiration and allow CO2 fixation um, through the Calvin cycle. RUBP fixes carbon dioxide to form 3 PGA. All right, now once the carbon dioxide molecule is removed from malate, that we go from a four carbon molecule here back to a oops, back to a three carbon uh, molecule, pyruvate. Whoops. 
Here we go. So this is a three carbon molecule once again. Now pyruvate is going to be converted to starch during the day. So this is going to build up in the chloroplast. And there are starch granules that build up in the chloroplast. But basically we don't have that same tight cycling um, of pyruvate back to phosphoenyl pyruvate like we saw in the C4 plant. So then when we go back to night again, we can see that, so this is resulting in a high concentration of starch. We're going to see here now that starch is going to be um, broken down or um, converted into triose phosphates, which then are used to resynthesize phosphoenyl pyruvate. So we're going to see a drop now in the starch concentration at night uh, because it's again used now to synthesize phosphoenyl pyruvate, our CO2 acceptor. Uh, at night. All right. Also, just a comment on pH, as the malic acid is um, brought out of the vacuole and then decarboxylated to pyruvate, now we're going to see during the day an increase in leaf internal pH um, as a result of, of this process, or, we, or essentially we should put that out here, um, is that the pH content is going to, um, the pH is going to be increasing. So in CAM plants we, we definitely can um, monitor uh, starch content as well as uh, leaf pH between day and night. We see, should see those um, be in sort of a, an opposite pattern. Uh, what's interesting is when we look at graphs like this where uh, we're comparing um, a CAM plant such as a cactus or something with what we call a facultative Cam plant, where this is a kind of plant here where when water is stressed it'll use CAM photosynthesis, but when water is available it'll use C3 photosynthesis. Uh, and so we're looking at both of those here. This happens to be the, um, the CAM plant, and this is the facultative CAM plant right here. And so what we can see in both cases, but more so with the, the CAM plant, we're looking at um, basically in this y-axis hydrogen ion concentration and um, throughout the day and into the night. So when you look at pH, or let's, in this case we have to look at pH as hydrogen ion content. So after the start of the day, the hydrogen ion content um, kind of reaches a, a peak um, and then starts to decline as um, malic acid is uh, turned into, or is decarboxylated. So we see a loss of acid content um, with the loss of hydrogen ion content, content here. Uh, and then as we get into the evening hours, you see the hydrogen ion content um, starts to go up again. And so, of course, as hydrogen ion content increases, then we, we have a decrease in pH. And likewise, as um, this hydrogen ion content is coming down, we would see an increase. This is increasing pH as the hydrogen ion content decreases. So it's interesting to kind of match these up with the time of the day. Uh, we'll just speak briefly to uh, these graphs over here, concentrating on this graph here, which shows the CAM plant. This is the facultative CAM. And A refers to photosynthesis rate or assimilation rate and PFD is um, photon flux density. So we can see the measurement of light increasing during the day uh, and then coming down towards the evening until night. And kind of what's interesting is to note that the assimilation rate or the decline in CO2 content is running in the opposite direction as the light. So CO2 uptake occurs at night or in low light and then um, goes down, you know, decreases here during the daylight hours, which corresponds with um, over here stomatal closure during the day. Whereas here we have um, stomata open during the nighttime. So these uh, graphs kind of show some of the things we've been talking about with CAM photosynthesis. Alright, the last thing that we're going to do is um, do some comparing and contrasting here between C3 and C4 um, photosynthesis. So, as well as CAM photosynthesis. So we have um, a table, this is, corresponds to a table that's in your um, guided review, if you want to take a look at that, but some various things that we could compare here. So, for example, um, where does malic acid form 
in C3 plants, this, you know, is going to be the result of cell respiration because malic acid or malate and oxaloacetate are actually Krebs cycle um, intermediates. Um, so that's going to be in the mesophyll cell, but we don't have those forming as a result of photosynthesis. In C4 photosynthesis, uh, malic acid, this should be with an I, malic acid or malate uh, forms in also the mesophyll cell and it is related to photosynthesis uh, and in the CAM um, in CAM photosynthesis it's also in the mesophyll cells fell, mesophyll cell uh, as a result of photosynthesis the next question is um, in terms of the location of the Calvin cycle uh, we're going to see that also in the mesophyll cell in the C3 plant the question is where does the Calvin cycle occur in C4 plants versus CAM plants. Uh, remember we didn't have a separation in space for the CAM plant, so that happens um, in the mesophyll cell. But the question is where, where does this happen in the C4 plant? Since C4 separates the steps of um, the Calvin cycle versus the initial CO2 fixation step in space between the mesophyll cell and the bundle sheath cell. Um, the Calvin cycle is located here in the bundle sheath cell, which means that's where rubisco is going to be found. Um, chloroplasts we have in the mesophyll cells uh, in C3 and also in the CAM plant. But in C4, remember we have uh, chloroplasts in both mesophyll and bundle sheath cells. So, um, you can kind of go through and, and answer some of the others that we talked about here. Uh, we talked about three ATP molecules per CO2 fixed in the C3 plant. We talked about a number here for the C4 plant. We didn't mention for this CAM plant that it takes about seven ATPs. Uh, we didn't necessarily identify where those occur, but um, in various steps there. Um, Transpiration ratio is the amount of uh, water lost per the amount of carbon gained. Um, and that reflects um, sort of the, the reciprocal of that would be referred to as water use efficiency. So we're going to give numbers associated with the transpiration ratio. Um, and so those numbers vary from 500 to 1,000 in C3 plants. So they lose a lot of water through those stomata. Whereas in C4 plants, there's certainly an improvement in the water use efficiency. They use less water given every um, gram of carbon that's um, synthesized. Uh, in the CAM plant, they have the highest water use efficiency, only about 50 to 100 um, grams of water are lost per carbon dioxide gained. So in a water stress environment, a CAM plant is going to be certainly um, at an, advent, at, at an advantage there. Uh, you can go ahead and review the ge geographic distribution um, that is associated with where we find each of these plants and their climatic uh, limitations. Uh, the CO2 compensation point is about um, anywhere from 20 to 100 parts per million CO2. That's remember where photosynthesis rate equals respiration rate. Um, the CO2 compensation point is uh, actually much lower in a C4 plant and that's again because it's um, concentrating CO2 at the site of rubisco and has plenty of ATP uh, and NADPH from those highlight uh, environments to convert carbon dioxide into, um, into sugars. And the CO2 compensation point in um, the CAM plant's also going to be very low because of this, having the same uh, enzyme um, that the C4 plant uses here. Speaking of those enzymes, these are the same ones that are asked, um, referred to down here. The temperature optimum for these uh, enzymes varies though, um, which is what makes a C4 plant and a CAM plant conducive to photosynthesis in high light and high temperatures. Um, so we can see a difference there. And that's also going to be conveyed to um, the CAM plant. Photorespiration, of course, is um, high. Uh, that's the whole reason the C4 cam and CAM photosynthesis evolved. Um, and this is also very, that's the lowest. 
and you can also see differences in the internal CO2 concentration because of that concentrating mechanism um, for near Rubisco.